I'm going to start by telling you guys something that I imagine many of you don't want to hear. It's a simple truth, but it's one that is inconvenient and unpopular. Before we can change the world, we must change how we eat. What we put on our forks directly dictates how successful we will be in pursuing our dreams. Tonight, I'd like to show you why and how you can use this information to your advantage. So why does what we eat matter? Food alters brain function. When we eat, our bodies break food down into basic nutrient building blocks, much the same way that a Lego set can be broken down into individual bricks. We then use those nutrients to build and maintain the cells, organs, and systems that form the very fabric of our bodies. When we eat a clean, whole, nutrient-dense diet, this process happens efficiently and effectively. When we eat foods or imitation food-like products that are toxic, rancid, genetically modified, or full of empty calories, our bodies scramble to keep operating without the right tools and materials for the job. We may look okay on the outside, but internally, we begin to resemble buildings cobbled together with rusty nails, rotting boards, and crumbling bricks. Essential pathways and organs become riddled with gaps and rot, decimating the physical, neural, and chemical systems that we rely on to understand and interact with the world around us. Cerebral allergies. When I was in elementary school, my classmates and I routinely brought in home-baked treats to celebrate birthdays and holidays. Today, this practice has been all but abolished by a meteoric rise in potentially life-threatening food allergies. Of course, this is understandable. When a candy bar knocks a child to the classroom floor in seizures, we have no trouble seeing the cause, the consequences, and the need to avoid the offending food. But while the safety of peanut butter sandwiches in school classrooms sparks vociferous debate across the nation, the insidious specter of cerebral allergies goes largely unnoticed and undiscussed. Cerebral allergies can present as an array of mental, emotional, and behavioral reactions. This makes them harder to diagnose than traditional allergies, but no less dangerous. My favorite example comes from author Carol Simontacci's book, The Crazy Makers. The author tells the story of taking her young daughter for allergy testing. The appointment started simply enough with the technician placing a single drop of the substance to be tested on the little girl's tongue. Mother and daughter then sat down to the work they'd brought to fill their waiting time. Almost immediately, the little girl started to giggle. When admonished to pay attention, she started to laugh so hard that she fell out of her chair. She was still on the floor, laughing hysterically when the technician came back and gave her the negating agent. Almost immediately, she stopped laughing, stood up, and calmly returned to her work. Her bizarre behavior was the result of a severe cerebral allergy to glycerin. That little girl was fortunate. Laughter is by far the most benign reaction. Common allergens such as gluten, processed dairy, soy, and chemical food dyes have been shown to cause aggression, anger, behavior problems, depression, anxiety, and even serious psychiatric issues. Food with the ability to hijack our brains are ubiquitous in our modern food supply. It is not a coincidence that the astronomical increases in the number of youth and adults diagnosed with mental and behavioral disorders mirrors skyrocketing trends in traditional allergies. In fact, in 2014, 12% of American children had been diagnosed with ADHD alone. Research tells us that more than two-thirds of those cases were directly caused by cerebral allergies, to the point that when the offending food was removed from the children's diets, they no longer qualified as having ADHD. Food alters perception. Author Gray Graham put it best when he said that hormones are the glasses through which we see the world. When we're eating a diet that is clean, balanced, and nutrient-dense, our view of the world is positive and balanced. When we eat the dietary equivalent of rusty nails and cr crumbling bricks, our endocrine system is among the first to take a serious hit. We take a second hit every time we eat inflammation-provoking foods, such as refined sugars and processed vegetable oils. Inflammation spikes our body's production of cortisol, our primary stress hormone. That cortisol shunts us into fight-or-flight mode. We instantly start to see the world as a hostile, dangerous place, and we instinctively react with defensiveness and aggression. 
When food hijacks our brains like this, we get trapped in a vicious cycle of helplessness, frustration, and exhaustion. Epigenetics, the master switch. Epigenetics is the science of how external forces shape the expression of our genes. If we imagine our genes as the railroad tracks in which we travel through life, epigenetics are the transfer switch that shuttle us from one direction to another. Just as a trans the single pull of a transfer switch can redirect our trajectory along an existing set of tracks, epigenetics alters our destination using the same underlying set of genes. Frankly, this is great news, considering that most of us were born with genes that we are less than thrilled about. <laughs> we inherited family histories rife with predispositions to disabling conditions and scary, scary things. <laughs> We tend to imagine these genetic risk factors as set in stone package deals, but the reality is far less bleak. Simple food choices that we make every day has the power to flip those epigenetic switches in our genes. In fact, it's easier than you think. That clean, nutrient-dense diet we were talking about, it will universally, positively impact the expression of your genes. Simple changes like removing toxic processed oils and replacing it with some green veggies and some good fats are all that it takes to start flipping those switches in yourself. In fact, research has shown that nutritional intervention, as little as two years of nutritional intervention in undernourished children, can cut adult rates of delinquency and criminal behavior by more than half. Flipping epigenetic switches will pay bonus dividends for those of you planning to have children. If you flip an epigenetic switch in yourself, your children inherit that positive gene expression. They start their lives ahead of the game, at a lower risk for those scary things haunting your family medical history. In fact, it takes only four generations to reverse your medical history. You have the power to completely wipe that slate clean and give your descendants the priceless gift of a family history marked by good health and long, happy lives. Fuel your passion. Many of us will come away from tonight's event inspired to action. No matter what the scale, scope, or direction of our passion, two things will be universally true. Your inspiration to act is vitally important, and it will come with obstacles. There's potential inside you that does not exist anywhere else on this planet, and we need it. Our broken, complicated world needs that. Passion is the driving force of change on every scale and in every arena. World-class venture capital and angel investors routinely cite passion as the key predictor of entrepreneurial success. They rank it above knowledge, experience, and capital. Make no mistake, passion changes the world, but it is an energy-intensive proposition. We cannot channel and sustain the kind of passion that we need to pursue our dreams and be forces of change in our community unless we are fueling ourselves with the kinds of food that promote a sharp brain, balanced emotions, physical stamina, positive epigenetic gene expression, and meaningful relationships. What does this look like? At the most basic level, it means avoiding processed junk, eating clean, nutrient-dense foods, educating ourselves, and respecting the bio-individuality of each of our bodies. The passion in you is precious and it is something that the world desperately needs. So tonight, I'm challenging you to unlock the potential that is inside you. I challenge you to start with what you put on your fork. Explore what it takes to fuel your body in a way that allows you to engage with the world around you, conquer the obstacles that you face, and drive the passion that's burning in you. If you do not change how you eat, you will not have the clarity, capacity, or passion that you need to power that change. But if you change how you eat, you can change the world. Thank you.